what I find over and over again in my work as a psychologist is that people have a lot of assumptions about how they're supposed to feel and what they're supposed to do after being diagnosed with cancer and while going through the treatment. Um, I'm not too concerned with how people feel they should be as much as I'm concerned about how to help people. And oftentimes how to help people is very different from the assumptions we have about how to go through illness. So a lot of people hear about being positive that it'll make a difference. And what we find is that stress is a pretty normal part of getting sick. When you think about stress causing cancer, I tell people over and over again, I never find that that is a very relaxing thought. Nobody's stress is diminished by thinking about all the health problems that can come with stress. So I encourage people, instead of trying not to be stressed or trying to be positive, to find effective ways to cope, healthy ways to cope, that can cushion the blow of a devastating diagnosis and an even longer, um, sometimes very grueling treatment process. So we now have uh, new information on the value of screening in lung cancer and early detection. Historically, it has not been proven to be effective, but now we have data that shows unequivocally early detection saves lives in lung cancer, and not just a few here and there, but large numbers of lives. In fact, some people have equated the developments in early detection for lung cancer to be the greatest single advancement in cancer care in 50 years. So it's very important that people who are at risk get screened, because early detection really does save lives when it comes to lung cancer. Oftentimes, uh, we miss the opportunity to really impact on that patient, but if we can identify uh, the risk factors and the signs and the symptoms that cancers present with, perhaps patients would uh, seek medical attention sooner uh, and present at an earlier stage, which would then be the more curable stage. I think it's a no-brainer to, um, to live a, a, a healthy lifestyle. You know, many people, you know, speak that in generality and don't know exactly what that means. Um, my take on it is take your body as a temple and take care of it. Um, so that means a good, healthy, varied diet. You know, not too much of something, not too little of something, right? Um, exercise every single day. If it means, you know, walking to, to, uh, to the car uh, when you go shopping instead of parking right next to the entrance. Um, something that makes you sweat, that's enough of an exercise. So the diagnosis of cancer, of course, is very scary. And what's important is that you have a coordinated team of physicians and nurses and support people who are providing all aspects of care. There's more to it than just getting the x-rays or getting the operation or getting chemotherapy. You need a supportive group that is working in a multidisciplinary fashion, especially with lung cancer. Many of our patients require input from medical oncologists, radiation therapists, and surgeons to get the best medical treatment and then they also need psychosocial support, social support from uh, the social workers, from the palliative care physicians, and their family members need supportive care. All of that is best done in a center where you have a navigator, a person who is responsible for helping the patient and their family navigate through all the different components of the healthcare system. So it all comes together as one. They don't feel lost. 